everyone. Welcome back to Web3 Deep Dive Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Wolfson. In today's interview, I'll be speaking with Tim Draper. Tim is a very well-known Silicon Valley-based venture capitalist. Tim is also a big believer in Bitcoin. So in this interview, we're going to be speaking all about Bitcoin, Web3, AI, and just innovation in general. Before getting started with today's episode, I also want to take the time to thank Edge and Node and House of Web3 for letting me film today's episode at this beautiful podcasting space in San Francisco. I'd also like to take the time to thank the sponsors behind Web3 Deep Dive Podcast. Thank you to VeChain and VBetterDAO, which is a sustainability-driven dApp ecosystem built on top of the VeChain Thor blockchain, aiming to promote Web3 adoption and incentivize actions that contribute to meeting the UN's 17 global sustainability goals within Web3. I also want to thank XYO Network. XYO revolutionizes data sovereignty in the decentralized era, ensuring trust and precision through its innovative blockchain-based protocol and network. Finally, thank you to Freedom GPT. Freedom GPT is the app store for artificial intelligence that allows anyone to access any AI model. Okay, without further ado, let's get started with the episode with Tim Draper. Hey, Tim, how are you? Terrific. Hi, Rachel. Great to be on your show here. Yeah, it's great to see you again. It's great to have you on the podcast. It means a lot to me that you're um, coming on the show today. So thank you. Uh, My pleasure. Okay, so Tim, before we get started, you don't need an introduction, but our listeners who might not be as familiar with you as I am, um, if you could just let them know a little bit about your background and how you got started in the Web3 space and in the investing space and just everything that's, um, that relates to you. Well, I got started in the venture capital business many years ago, and uh And I did it with a, I started with a small business investment company where I borrowed from the US government and it got me started. And uh, I, they were about to call my loan and things uh, looked very bad. And uh, then the, the, I had to convince them to hold off on calling my loan. And then uh, the IPO window opened up and, uh, and I had, uh, five IPOs in my portfolio. And suddenly I was on their wall as venture capitalist of the year. So I went from their dirt list to venture capital of the the year in about a year. (laughs) And after that, I brought on partners, um, build a big firm and then, uh, and then spun out of that firm to do, uh, uh, investing a little bit more uh, with my style. If if you build a big firm, it takes on a life of its own. Uh, And there were a lot of very bright people working with me there and they they did some great work. But we but I spun out on my own and uh, with Draper Associates and uh, it really ended up being incredibly successful. Um, I did some things that I never would have done in a larger partnership uh, because they were a little odd and they were things that would not normally uh, fly through a partnership of 11 uh, decision makers. Uh, One was to create a show, Meet the Drapers. uh, And at first I, you know, I couldn't get my mother to watch. And, uh, and now there's 70 million viewers of Meet the Drapers. And we get uh, enormous deal flow from the show. Uh, one another was to start a school for entrepreneurs. I started Draper University of Heroes, and at first I just uh, did it for free and grabbed anybody I could. And now um, we've had uh, about four thousand students through there, and they've started a thousand companies, and five are unicorns already. Uh, and it's a, a a very unique school. Uh, We keep students for five weeks in hero training and then five weeks of go. And, uh, and with that, they go off and do extraordinary things. And I I think our training is great for that. And as a venture capitalist, um, these are some vehicles for us to generate more and more deals. And it turns out that uh, Web3 and uh, and all of our crypto investments and uh, the investments that we're making um, in all these other fields 
are really being driven not by my imagination, but by the imaginations of the entrepreneurs, whether they're the students or the people on our show. Um, the entrepreneurs really drive what our future looks like. And then we can label it Web3 at some point. We can um, picture a future that those entrepreneurs are, are leading us to. Uh, but mostly, I um, my job is to catch hold of, vi of visionaries and uh, and then inspire them to do greater things than they would have otherwise. Uh, and that has been fantastic. And this is, I mean, I and as a result, I get all sorts of credit for being, um, you know, the first Silicon Valley venture capitalist to invest in China, for instance, and the first one to get out of China. <laughs> First in Silicon Valley investor to um, to invest in Eastern Europe, first one to buy Bitcoin, first one to um, to do any any um, anything to do with Web three. Um, we uh, you know we we're early. Well, I guess my son was the first one into unstoppable domains, but. Um, He's also the first one into Coinbase. Wow. Is that, that's Adam, right? That's Adam. Adam, yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, right. and uh, Billy worked, worked with me for four years and now he's spinning off and doing some great things himself. And Jesse, my, my daughter is, uh, runs Halogen Ventures and she, uh, and she is backing entrepreneurs that have uh, some female somewhere in the, the founding team. And that has been extraordinary for her. She's she's done very well too. So all three all three of those who've gone into the venture capital business after sitting around our dinner table um, seem to understand it and know what they're doing. So that's nice. great. So it's fun to be able to pass it on. My my great my grandfather, their great grandfather, was the first Silicon Valley venture capitalist, uh, and my dad was a pioneer one of the first and a true pioneer of venture capital. Um, and so uh, we've had it in our blood and it has taken on amazing lives, many lives. Uh, and we're, we're very excited about what the future holds. We think that this, um, the venture capital field clearly has grown extraordinarily uh, when I was growing up, I had to explain to my friends what a venture capitalist was. And when I first started, there were still not very many venture capitalists on the planet. And now I, if you go to a, a bar in San Francisco and you ask five people what they do, I'll bet two of them say they're venture capitalists. I'm gonna so do that tonight. <laughs> yeah. Test that theory. <laughs> Cause here I am, I'm in San Francisco again. So I'll be sure to note that Tim. <laughs> Terrific. Please do. Yeah. Before we get started with the questions, I also wanted to tell you, you know, we've met, we met years ago. And the last time I think I saw you in person was at Draper University. And there was an event going on. I got one of your t-shirts. It said 250K Bitcoin by 2023. But <laughs> Long it story. actually said by 2022. Oh, 2022. Sorry. And, and I wish Bitcoin I would have was at 4,000 at the time I was, I was handing those things out at that, that event. Yeah. Oh, good well, thing I, you, you were at that. Hold on to that t-shirt. Yeah. I still have it. I it's wish I would have brought it. It's been delayed. And the, the delay has happened for two reasons. One is um, I thought the user experience in shopping with Bitcoin was going to be easier because uh, by now, uh, and there were only today, there's still only open node and a few others that, um, that allow for an easy retail experience with Bitcoin. And I had no idea that the U S government was going to be so, um, such Luddites, um, kind of trying to drag us back to the dark ages. And, uh, and I didn't realize that regulators were going to, you know, puff out their chests and make our, you know, our lives miserable and make all the entrepreneurs of the world um, build their businesses with a, uh, a geofence around the United States. I mean, that, that is 
a crime. That is horrible for the U.S. because we've always been so innovative here in the Silicon Valley. We've always loved all the innovation. Uh, we've always had a the freest government in the world. We've always had the government that allowed people to spread their wings and try new things. And now regulators are coming down on people before they've even shipped anything. And I think that's a really bad trend and needs to be reversed. Um, and I think, you know, that's why I'm pushing for Nikki Haley. I think she's uh, much less command and control than the two old men are. Yeah, and, let's talk. Yeah, go ahead. I want to talk a little bit about Nikki uh, Haley. Yeah. She is a, she's very good on freedom. She's very good on um, pushing decisions, uh, government decisions down to the state and local levels, um, decentralization in effect of government. Uh, she believes that um, regulations slow down economies and a slow economy means that the government has to tax at a higher rate and that slows the economy further. Um, so uh, regulations are, are really um, like a slow strangulation on an economy. And I think and she understands that. So. Um, I got behind her a hundred percent. She is fantastic, delightful human and, um, and very clear thinking and, and comes to terms with all these issues very, um, effectively and efficiently. And then, um, uh, and then explains them in very clear terms, uh, and understands multiple sides of every equation and and she really do does get the big picture and um and the global scene and i think uh the isolationists don't understand how important us being globalized is to our world uh and to our own economy so mm -hmm. yeah we're we're very excited about what uh, she could bring to the united states and and she could bring back that incredible freedom that we had. Uh, and my guess is that uh, the regulators and the insiders and the, you know, they're going to be threatened by her because she's going to shake it up. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I'd love to have Nikki on the show and, and meet her even in person at some point. I know you're a big supporter, so we'll see what happens. Um, Terrific. Great. Well, get a bigger audience. <laughs> well, Tim, maybe this interview will help drive that. <laughs> I would love to get a bigger audience. But as you know, I am an entrepreneur as well. And I started the podcast a year ago. And, you know, we've seen ups and downs in the space. So it hasn't been easy. But, you know, I think having people like you on and, and possibly Nikki Haley um, definitely helps drive people to the podcast. The purpose of VBetterDAO is to become a vast sustainability dApp platform and onboard millions of daily users in the coming years. This directly benefits VChain tokens, VET and VThor, also known as the protocol value layer and the gas token. All activity on chain benefits VET. This is VChain creating a new pathway to driving mass adoption alongside our enterprise initiatives, which yes, continues of course. What is better? Better is the incentive token, it's paid to people, apps, and the treasury. What is vote? Vote is used for casting votes, for apps, community proposals, and treasury requests. It's obtained through a one-to-one -one swap with better tokens. Join now and be better. Yeah, that's great. Of course. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. That's the goal. Definitely. And, uh, and she, uh, yeah, podcasts are, it is interesting. Um, a few of the podcasts have uh, really spread the message and people uh, listen to some of my interviews on podcasts and I hear about them weeks, months later. Uh, so they do have an effect. Um, so I think you're doing a great thing here. So keep it up. Thank you. Yeah. The goal is just not to give up and keep it up, but what are your thoughts on crypto and politics now that we're kind of on the topic? Do you think that it's good for crypto to be politicized 
or, or, you know, just what are your thoughts? Well, I think that um, it's clear to me after having traveled around the world, seen multiple leaders of different countries, um, that the weak leaders are the ones who are trying to control everybody and set rules down and tell everybody what to do. And the strong leaders are the ones who, who set a platform that's very clear and they, they set people free. And, and it's so important in this, in new innovative industries where there's a lot of innovation and people are trying new things and, um, and experimenting that having that freedom, that platform for freedom, uh, and trusting people, uh, creating a platform of trust and freedom for those people, uh, will accelerate not just the sandboxes of the world, not just the innovative innovators of the world, but the entire economy, the confidence of the country, the, the building mentality of the, of the people. All those things really take off when a, when a uh, leader trusts their people and sets them free uh, with very clear laws, very clear rule of law, very clear, clear laws, but not a lot of regulations. Uh, the regulations really do stymie creativity. They force everyone into a form. You know, I, I don't know I, if it always happened to me that I'd fill out these forms and I never quite fit the form. And uh, and I think that's true of everybody. I think we all kind of go, yeah, this isn't quite the thing I'm looking to fill out. You know, I can't quite answer this question. And uh, and I think those forms are are uh, constraining us from all of the creativity that is available to our people. And uh, the more I hear entrepreneurs saying, um, well, we have to get FDA approval. We have to get the SEC on board here. We, we have to see what the SEC, worse, we have to see what the SEC is going to come up with for this. Then they're waiting for years because the SEC is not coming up with anything. They're just going to be a dark cloud. And then they're going to slap people down who've done things they didn't like. I mean, that is a really bad way to govern. A good way to govern is here are the very clear rules. If you are outside of these rules, then go ahead. And eventually we will, we will come and regulate those if they, if they are harming someone. But right now, the SEC is slapping down AI. We don't even know what AI can do for us. And they're slapping down AI. Um, AI. They, they, they've been, uh, the, I think it's, I mean, what has government done with uh, cryptocurrencies? Well, um, the, the trusting and free governments are starting to show up in other parts of the world um, where El Salvador and Uruguay and uh, Estonia and Switzerland and Singapore are starting to go, yeah, hey, we got some very clear rules for these cryptocurrencies and we're going to encourage people to use them. But in the U.S., we have this central bank and central bank, notice the name, central bank, Emphasis where on they central. control all the dollars. And they, uh, you know, if, if Trump wanted to print $10 trillion, he printed $9 trillion around the pandemic. And uh, they just print them. It's like, here, there's a bunch of money, we're just going to do stuff with it. And that the money you have is now worth about 70 cents versus what it was worth before he printed all that money. Uh, he created that inflation. Um, and then, uh, and then Biden is now doing this, uh, burning through all of our oil reserves so that we don't have the crazy inflation that we would normally have in this kind of a situation. So they, um, 
the beauty of, of Bitcoin is that it is decentralized and it's not politically driven and it's not trying to, you know, make a president look good. It is, uh, it is a currency that is open, global. Uh, it's transparent. We don't need, um, I don't need, if, if I were to be able to run a fund all in Bitcoin, and I can in some countries, but I can't in the U.S., where I raise the fund all in Bitcoin, I invest it all in Bitcoin, I have my, um, the companies I invest in pay their employees and suppliers all in Bitcoin, we pay our taxes in Bitcoin, and, um, and all of the accounting is done in, on the blockchain, I will have a frictionless fund. It will not, I will not be required to pay millions of dollars to legal fees, accountants, bookkeepers, auditors, transfer agents. All of that will be done on the blockchain automatically. And, uh, and why our country is resisting this is all like political, personal self-interest. It isn't because it's for the good of the country. We will, um, our, our economy can take off with, in a Bitcoin economy. Our, um, and it's, it's happening now in, um, in El Salvador. I mean, now that, that country is taking off. They'll be able to pay, you know, Bitcoin hits, I don't know, 100,000. <clears> They'll be able to pay off the IMF, never have to talk to them again. Um, They'll be able to, uh, they'll probably be the most attractive country in the world to go live. And they, they will have within maybe 30 or 40 years gone from the poorest, most crime ridden country to maybe one of the richest, most innovative countries in the world, just in that period of time. And just because they embraced Bitcoin and, right. uh, they, yeah. and the countries that are resisting it and the and the people who are resisting it are really either they're control based or they're or they're saying, no, I've always had the mighty dollar and I'm good with that. I don't want to change anything. Don't mess with what I've got. Definitely. And I think that that, um, you know, we're a, we're a country of innovators and pioneers. I think we want to keep being that country of innovators and pioneers. So. Nikki Haley for president, baby. Yeah, yeah. The problem with data today is that a lot of people profit or companies profit from it and they take your data, uh, but you're not properly incentivized or compensated uh, for it. Blockchain and cryptocurrency make it possible that uh, you are incentivized and they make the data more useful by making it immutable. Expo is the supply chain for data. It allows you to produce high quality, pure data to manufacture solutions and applications on it. Well, what are your thoughts on the passing or the recent approval of the spot Bitcoin ETF in the United States? I mean, I, I see that as a small victory for us. What are your thoughts? Well, yeah, I mean, people can buy Bitcoin anyway, but this is people from the old world being able to buy Bitcoin in the new world. So that's actually good for them because they now, I mean, if you, if you, saw the world the way I do, which is, oh yeah, I'll go back. My dad gave me a million dollars of Confederate money. And I looked at it and I went, whoa, a million dollars. What can I do with this? And he goes, oh, nothing. No one will take it. And I'm looking and I'm saying, that's what the dollar is going to look like in 10 years. There will be a moment where you're going to go into a a store and you're going to try to buy something for dollars and they'll say, no, we just take Bitcoin. And then you're going to be trying to get rid of your dollars as fast as you possibly can. And there'll be a run on the dollar. Um, that moment could be five years out, could be 10, could be 15, but you, you don't want that moment to happen when you're only holding dollars. And so this is the, the spot ETF is something where somebody can hold Bitcoin take some portion of their money and just put it into Bitcoin in a very easy way so that when there's a run on the dollar, they'll still be able to pay 
you know, for food, clothing and shelter for their family. They'll still be able to for their business. They'll still be able to make payroll. Um, <clears throat> when Silicon Valley Bank and a couple other banks went out of business, uh, there was a real panic and uh, and it was Thursday when they went out of business. And if the government hadn't um, spent a bunch, bunch of money and made people whole, um, we had companies that only held their money at Silicon Valley Bank and only in dollars. And, uh, and those companies would not have been able to make payroll on that Monday. And that Monday, um, that payroll would have been the responsibility of the management and the people on the board to pay personally out of their pocket. And some people had payrolls of 10,000 people, maybe even a hundred thousand people. And they had, then they had personal responsibility to make those payrolls for at least two weeks, sometimes four weeks. Well, so I went back after that, I went to all of my companies and I said, okay, who's in charge of your treasury? I want this money to be um, a third of it should go or roughly a third into a big bank, a third of it into a small bank and a third of it, or at least two weeks and hopefully two months of payroll in Bitcoin. And people say, well, first, why? And you say, well, the big banks seem to be where the safe money goes. And then they go, oh, yeah, yeah. So I'll put it in the big bank. But the small banks are the ones the government can still bail out. The big banks are too big for the governments to bail out with any reasonable, in any reasonable way. And then the Bitcoin is really so that you are not personally liable for the payroll of your people uh, over those next two weeks, four weeks, or a couple of months. So, um, so it was a, it was a message. Now with an ETF, it's a pretty easy way for somebody to kind of, in effect, hold Bitcoin. Right. When you say Bitcoin on the payroll, does that mean they would, if they had to pay their employees using Bitcoin? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, they right. could cover it in Bitcoin. Right. And, you know, people say, well, you know, Bitcoin's volatile or whatever. But if you look, and that's that's looking at the chart that goes like up like this, Bitcoin versus the dollar going up like that. Look at the chart of Dollar versus Bitcoin. The dollar versus Bitcoin just goes down, 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 yeah. down, 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 down. Just keeps going down. It, the dollar is what's volatile. Bitcoin, right. we already know there are only 21 million of them. One right. Bitcoin's and the, worth one Bitcoin. And the halving, the fourth halving event is coming up in April. Yeah. So, um, any thoughts on that? Well, it, it's the way the, that Bitcoin was um, created to have the, they called it the halvening oh. um, with the first two. And then the last two, they've just called it the halving, halving. Interesting. Um, the, uh, anyway, the, um, what, what it does is it says um, the miners uh, can only get half a Bitcoin where they were getting a full Bitcoin before the halving. And when they go out and they, they, they're looking for Easter eggs, they're, and, uh, and then occasionally they come up. Well, the value of those Easter eggs, there will be fewer of those Easter eggs around for the miners to, to hunt for. And as a result, the, the value of one of them becomes twice as much. But in, in the case of Bitcoin, it actually accelerates it even more. And so, um, so usually during the halvings or going running up to the halvings, um, Bitcoin runs up um, maybe five or ten x, mm -hmm. um, and that uh, and then it comes back and it sort of settles and then it waits for the next halving and then 
but uh, I think that we're so we're in in the beginning of a, a pretty major run, Definitely. and I think I think it's going to be um, terrific. And I think you know now people are going to start saying, okay, you know, retailers will say, you know, sure, you can buy your food with Bitcoin, you can buy your housing with Bitcoin, your clothing with Bitcoin. And, uh, and when that's true, people won't want to hold on to any dollars. Mm -hmm. And that's when there will be the run on the dollar. So it's coming. Uh, don't know exactly when, 5, 10, 15 years. Right. Well, I mean, I, I believe that as well. And, you know, you're you're kind of the reason why I've been holding my Bitcoin for so many years because of that event. Just going back to the start of the podcast, that event and that T-shirt, it's just engraved in my mind. You know, I never wanted to sell my Bitcoin because I always, you know, for me, it's financial freedom. And, you know, just seeing that the value increases, even if it when it decreases, like I'm just so chill about it because I believe in Bitcoin so much. And so when you say, you know, eventually if we can buy goods or houses or, you know, real estate with Bitcoin, it makes me think like, wow, that is a really cool concept, but am I going to want to actually sell my Bitcoin ever? I mean, it's just, no, but so you won't to want to, but, but you won't want to hold on to dollars. Right. So, so, then you'd have so to eventually you'll be sitting and you'll, you'll say, okay, you know, all these stores, they, you know, they, they still take dollars, but the, the rate is, you know, 2.5 million uh, dollars to a Bitcoin. Do I, and, and there'll be this moment where you just go, God, just, I'll only put out the, the bare minimum. I'll hold only the bare minimum in dollars and the rest I'll just hold in Bitcoin. I mean, I think that's where it's going. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we will see. Freedom GPT is an app store for AI. Freedom GPT is most commonly known for its sensor-free AI model called Liberty that answers literally any prompt you ask with an unbiased response. Unlike other AIs where controversial topics are off limits, Freedom GPT embraces the concept that you should be able to ask AI anything. Equally important, Freedom GPT has the option to be run locally on your computer so your data remains 100% private and secure. Check out Freedom GPT's over 80 AI models today. Um, let's, let's change the subject a little bit. So what, um, web three projects are you interested in and why? Well, we funded unstoppable domains. They were the first. Um, and what I liked about it was it, it led us to a much more decentralized world. Um, it allowed for, for people to own their own data. It allowed people to own their own uh, site, their own uh, forever. Um, it allowed for free speech. Uh, you can, you know, say free Tibet in China and you do it and no one can take it down. No uh, uh, platform can take it down. Um, there was the, the, you know, the woke population that seemed to think that they should be telling us what we could say and not say. And that was starting to um, rise. And hopefully that's the, it's the end of that. That was ridiculous. I mean, free speech is so important for everything, for innovation, for freedom, for th free thinking, for debate, for, um, thicker skins for people to be tougher um, and and to be more understanding of each other. And uh, and I think that uh, that that woke ism uh, hopefully is, you know, the knock on wood that things coming to an end uh, and we're back to free speech. But in any case, you could use a um, you know, you can go buy a dot, dot crypto or dot X domain from from unstoppable domains and you can put anything you want on that and it can be offensive or it can be inoffensive it can be um 
what you think of the world. It can be whatever you want. And what that does is it allows free speech in a world that was starting to, you know, people on uh, Twitter were getting muted, people on Facebook there were getting muted. Uh, there were some, um, you know, school buildings, names had to be changed. It, so many things, statues getting torn down. A lot of things happening that were um, not honest to our history and um, and not free freedom thinking. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Unstoppable was uh, a really good opportunity to uh, allow people that freedom. And right. I think that that's a big part of what Web3 uh, brings. Web3 in some ways is uh, you own your own, your own data, you, you've got a wallet, uh, Bitcoin wallet other or other cryptocurrency wallet. Um, and that wallet can go in and out ramp on ramp off ramp money. Um, it eventually will be all in VR. We'll be able to do it. A lot of that web three is the, the big requirement of, of web three is going to be identity. And, uh, and if we get identity, right, then, um, security is not as big an issue. Uh, but in the meantime, we have, you know, this ongoing battle between the hacker and the security. And uh, I think we're, we're, Web3 is opening up all sorts of new avenues, new ways of looking at the world, new ways of thinking. Um, and uh, people describe it in many different ways. And, uh, and we, we see entrepreneurs bringing um, new ideas around Web3 and new, new concepts for um, every, everything from, you know, layer two and three uh, cryptocurrencies to, uh, to uh, new forms of data control, um, AI is merging into it, which is very exciting. Uh, it's amazing what you can do with AI now. In fact, you could probably have um, run this entire interview with my AI. We have an AI and we've, oh. I've just created the guy. In fact, I, oh. I'd be cool if I could show it, but I, I don't think I can do that. Let's see how would that works. I think you can. Well, we, you um, could do a screen share. Um, I think that, you know, if you see at the bottom, if you no, want to no, share the I, screen. No, 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 the AI is, uh, it, I, I reach it on my phone, so I'd have to put oh, my okay. phone up to the screen. Um, okay. Anyway, it looks just like me, talks just like me. It's is, great. It's how really How is that fun. being powered? But what platform is powering it? What's it called? Oh, uh, these. It's a Web3 yeah, AI platform, I'm assuming. Yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah, they did a, they, I mean, so far, it looks like it very close. So, um, you know, next time you don't, you won't know if it's me or my AI being interviewed with you. Oh, wow. But maybe That's we'll weird. do that. Maybe you <laughs> want to do that on your, on your, uh, podcast. You could just say, Hey, we're interviewing Tim's AI. Let's do a follow up with that. Let's also get Nikki Haley's AI. Cause that's probably all I'm going to get <laughs> at this point. <laughs> But that that's really cool, like just doing these interviews with people's AIs, but with their permission, right? Because we wouldn't want to do something where it's like... Yeah, the, AI should just have a watermark. It should always uh -huh. have a watermark um, uh -huh. so that everybody knows, oh, okay, that's the AI. Yeah. So, you you know, you feel like you're, you know, at least you're connecting with, with whoever it is, but um, you've got to know that there's a watermark on it. Okay, cool. Well, Tim, we're running low on time and I know you're very busy, so I don't want to keep you over time. So additional comments that we didn't discuss in the interview that you want our listeners to know about. Well, um, I think we've got a very bright future and that future really is tied to people's freedom. 
And I think anytime you think that there should be another law, just bite your tongue. Or there should be another regulation, just bite your tongue. You, you really want the, the world to be as free as possible. You want to be able to say whatever you want to say. You want to be able to build your life the way you want to build your life. Um, you know, you don't want to harm anybody else, but you do want to be able to have that freedom to try new things and think about how, how difficult the world would be for you if you had to go back 50 or 100 years. Go back 100 years, it's like no indoor plumbing, you know, no transportation, no, you know, it, it would be, it's a very different world. Um, and go forward 50 years and our world's going to be fantastic. And, uh, and the more fantastic it'll be, I mean, the more freedom we have, the more innovative people are, the more adventuresome they are now, the better it's going to be 50 years from now. Yeah. So the future looks bright. And I think definitely everybody in Web3 is happy, you know, with the future and the way it's going and the price of Bitcoin right now. So it's exciting. They're exciting times. Tim, if our listeners want to get in touch with you, how can they do that? Do you use X also in Tim the at, Twitter? Tim at Draper.vc is my email address. That's the right one. Go for it. Okay, awesome. Tim, thank you. It means the oh, world to but, it, you but only send me. I don't want to hear about everything else in your life, even though I'm sure it's fascinating. I would. I only want to get business plans from you. Business and, plans. And uh, Dex decks around uh, around your web three new innovation cool okay. um, otherwise don't don't use don't worry about the email address or tell your friends who are starting their web three companies come to me okay awesome tim thank you so much and i look forward to seeing you in person at some point so thanks again okay bye-bye thanks bye special thanks to four labs digital for producing web three deep dive podcast i'd also like to thank the sponsors behind web three deep dive you can click the links in the show notes to learn more about each of the Web3 initiatives from these sponsors. Finally, thanks to the listeners for tuning in. Please be sure to subscribe, like, and share. I'll see you guys next time.